Boy, thank God nobody was hurt. I don't think I could have lived with myself if somebody had been hurt, you know? You always were too damn impatient for your own good, Johnny. Pete, what am I going to do? It was the last insurance company to take a risk on me. And I won't drive without insurance. So stop driving. I can't. That's what I do, man. I don't know nothing else. Something like this happened to you, didn't it? That accident back in 69, you found work. My kind of work I don't think you'd want, Johnny. All I know is my dad used to say to me, Johnny, you ever got a problem, you go to Pete Sinkovich. And if he can, he'll take care of it. And if he can't, nobody can. Your dad was a good man, Johnny. Good union man. I was a drunk, Johnny. Dead ender. Had nowhere else to go. Guys like me, we're the only ones who'll take this kind of work. If you want to buy into it, make damn sure you got no other options. I've had four accidents in two years. If that's not a dead end, I don't know what is. Okay. You want to run tomorrow? You go with me, I'll show you the ropes. How's it sound? Okay. What about the insurance? The company carries its own insurance. These guys love them. Always keep a pack on you, whether you smoke or not, you know. Use them for trades, bribes, whatever. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Leave her alone! No, Johnny. God's sakes, we can't just leave Johnny, they're not alive. What? They're not alive. Take a look. Pete! Hey, troublemaker. What did you think you were doing? <laughs> hey, it was his first run. He didn't mean nothing honest. you to do what I do and keep your mouth shut. Now, do you understand? Look at it this way. A long time ago, the boss decided to create a new kind of worker with greater decision-making abilities. You, me, the rest of mankind. The only hitch was we got immortal souls. When you give us the freedom to choose between good and evil, <laughs> sure as shoot, some of us are gonna choose evil. The, uh, Chronically unemployable, you might say. They're here forever. They're immortal, right? So the boss decided to create a kind of a 
toxic waste dump, you know? So they wouldn't poison other people. Storm brewing. Yeah. You don't get too much rain on a road to hell. You hear all kinds of stories. Like in China and India. They got trains there. In Russia, they got tram lines. And in Mexico, it's old buses on dusty roads. Always at night. Listen. Maybe we ought to go and put some kind of tarp on the cattle car to keep the people in back dry. Uh, they're just cargo, Johnny. Uh, they're pass carry. By the time we get to the next truck stop, the rain will be stopped anyway. The stop? Here? Wherever you got truck drivers, Johnny, you got truck stops. Uh. <laughs> the fifth wheel, Johnny. I'll go get us a table. Okay. I don't belong here, mister. So I'm glad I don't. Please, mister, you gotta help me. You can do it, mister. You can do it when they ain't even looking. You're our last chance, mister. You understand? You're our last chance. Damn it. I've been working this run for five years. I never have once complained in all that time. But this is wrong. Hey, you keep your voice down, you hear? Now, the union said there was nothing to be done about it. It ain't our business. We just hold on. our business. When you and me and the rest of us at this table kick off, then it'll sure as shoot be our business, won't it? Hey, Merle, take it easy. What's got you so worked up anyway? Nothing. He's just an old rabble rouser, that's all. Merle, you better learn to maintain, boy. Forget it. You go ahead. You be team players. What got into him? There's been some uh, trouble down the line. Out of circles. Disturbances. Disturbances? From the dead, you mean? Isolated incidents, that's all. Employees will have it under control in a day or two. They always do. And if you two know what's good for you, you'll stay out of it. <laughs> this is crazy. There's never been any unrest from the dead. Take my advice. Watch out for number one. The less you know, the better off you're gonna be. by the outer circles. Hmm? Oh, the outer circles. Uh, that's the most recently dead. The further you go into the city, the older the dam become. The city expands with each new shipment. You'll see what I mean when we get over this hill here. against type that calms down the cargo when they first see it. There. You hear? Yeah, it's about the only peace and quiet you get on this leg of the run.
like this. You were expecting flames? Yeah, well, some kind of punishment, I guess. Our management don't care if they're punished or not. As long as they're stuck away somewhere where they can't do decent folks no harm. Toxic waste, remember? Uh, this embarkment terminal's about a uh, half a mile up. worse than I thought. So what do we do? Drop off the cars and get the hell out of here, that's what. I was a sow, a pig. I admit it. I fouled kids and just let them run wild without no guidance. But I didn't know no better. Please. I can't do anything for you. Honest, I can't. I just don't understand. I had a family. A wife, two sons. I loved them. I did everything I could for them. Now, maybe I didn't go to church every Sunday, and maybe I didn't even believe there was a God. But what kind of God sends you to hell just for not believing in it? Why, mister? Why? Please, go away. I can't help you. I can't. It's all right. Come on. Come on. Let him through, people. Come on, let him through. Don't worry. One of the employees is bound to come by and help you and your friend. Union rules. How do you know? Used to be a driver before I got kicked upstairs to management. And then I died. 
and wound up here myself. Imagine my surprise. Gary Frick. John. John Davis. They were confessing like they was ancient mariners or something. They didn't sound any worse than any of the poor slobs I call friends. Throw away their lives chasing after trucks and booze or hookers. No worse than me. They don't deserve to be here. That's right. Neither do I. But we're here anyway. That's what the disturbances are about. People are being sent to hell that don't deserve it. Word's getting around. I'm helping to get it around. I figure if there's enough trouble, the boss will hear about it and take charge. What do you mean? He's not in charge of hell? John, do you really think the boss does all the choosing himself? You think he put some of these poor suckers here just for making the kind of mistakes they made? The kind of mistakes any of us could make? I don't, I don't think I understand. You will. John, you seem like a good man, a decent man. There is injustice here. You're in a position to help. Working in management, I found something out, something you could use. Daddy! If you've got the courage. I know where the high road is. It's okay, Johnny. They're gonna escort us back to the annex. The uh, disturbance is being ironed out and uh, everything will be back up to speed soon. That man you was talking to, who was he? Hey, let go. Who was he? I think he said his name was Gary. I, I never saw him before. For God's sakes, let go. You better come with me. I think management is gonna wanna talk with you. First, let me congratulate you on your bravery, Mr. Davis. Word is you tried to help an employee when everybody else ran. We appreciate that. We've had some reports from the field, and we're hearing nothing but good things about you. Look, let's level with each other, okay? I've been on the job one day, and the only reason I'm here is because this Gary talked to me. Who is he, anyway? Gary was in our organization until last year. Died in a car accident. I'm shocked to hear that he got the low road. Well, maybe I'm shocked, but I'm not surprised. He was a bit of a troublemaker. Seems he's continuing to make trouble, fomenting unrest along the outer circles. He said he didn't belong there. Oh. Did you ever meet a convicted man, John, who didn't claim he was innocent? I'd have a lot easier time believing that if it wasn't for all the others in there. It didn't seem like they must deserve to be there either. Sounds to me like you've been taken in by a lot of secular intellectual propaganda. I've been only in charge here for a short while. My predecessor wasn't a religious man. He thought this was a job just like any other where you could compromise now and then. But you can't. Not when you're keeping the land clean. As it says in Psalms, the ungodly are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Sinners, John. The murderers, the muggers, the hustlers, the pornographers, atheists, heathens, and so-called humanists. You mean anyone who doesn't measure up to your standards? Not my standards, John. The only standards that matter. Age-old and violet standards that God-fearing people have observed for centuries. Now, naturally, when there's a moral realignment like this, you're going to have some whiners and complainers. But all that will pass in time. Gary told me that the boss doesn't do all the choosing anymore. <laughs> well, the boss doesn't want to be bothered with all the pluses and minuses, all the bookkeeping. You're in charge of hell. Well, I make the final decisions, yes. Uh, but in a larger sense, we, mankind, are in charge. Have been for centuries. Now, that's not the sort of thing we'd like to get around. It's important, John, that good men like you stay on the job, driving the chaff, the ungodly, away from the righteous. If you leave the job, can't know what kind of security you'll be leaving behind. Look at Gary Frick. He never thought he'd wind up on the low road. But you just never know, do you? Now, about Gary, was there uh, anything else he said to you? Anything that uh, you'd like to talk to us about? 
people, sir. Not that I can recall. And since you've explained the situation to me, I guess I do have a responsibility to stay on the job. Yeah. I guess I do with that. We'll put you on the low road. I off to cop. What do you care? We'll put you on the low road. Rape? Arson? Lots of stuff. <laughs> what, you taking a survey? <laughs> what about you, ma'am? I don't know. I never harmed anyone. N not intentionally. Not in my whole life. I have no idea why. Why I'm here. What'd you do for a living? Oh, I, I, I was... I, I was a librarian, that's all. A, a school librarian. I always tried to do the things that I thought were right. When they tried to take Vonnegut and Salinger and Huxley off the shelves, I fought for them. I did. That, that should count for something, shouldn't it? What about you, miss? Me? I, I was uh, a junkie. I poisoned myself with all kind of drugs. I, I was stupid, I admit it. But can they send you to hell for being stupid? For hurting no one except myself? Hey, man, listen, there must be some kind of mistake. Like this lady here, like she was saying, I, I never hurt anybody in my life. I mean, hell, that, that, that's why I skipped to Canada instead of going to Nam. I knew I could never kill anybody. I mean, I knew it. What about you? Put you in the low road. I don't know. I never committed any crime. Never did anything unethical. I don't know why I'm here. Unless... Now that, that's crazy. They wouldn't put me here just for being gay. All right. You, 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 and you. Out. Hey. Head due east for about five miles. Turn right about a mile and a half before you hit the annex. That'll be the high road. I can't tell you what's at the end of the road. Nobody knows. Is it heaven? Maybe, but it may not be your particular idea of heaven. Was hell what you expected it to be? It's a risk. The high road's always a risk. At least it's a chance. Good luck. It's a risk for you, too. Why are you doing this? I'm just doing my bit, lady. I remember this story back in Sunday school about how between the crucifixion and the resurrection, Christ spent some time in hell. Rescuing the righteous, the ones that didn't belong. Harrowing hell, they called it. <laughs> I guess you could say I'm just following an old tradition. Harrowing hell. We recall it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Go. Go. Centuries ago, hell was reached by chalk-white horses pulling shuttered coaches, by Spanish galleons borne on black sails through uncharted seas. Legend has it, Leonardo da Vinci was once commissioned to build a flying machine to carry souls to hell, but it never returned from its maiden flight. But along this particular road to hell lies redemption for the damned, as well as for drivers who have found work in the Twilight Zone.